Here's an announcement for teachers. Would you please note that next Wednesday's edition of Science Workshop will be broadcast on BBC Two at the usual time of 9.38. That's next Wednesday, the 18th of May at 9.38 on BBC Two. Today's programme is all about levers, and I've just driven under one. Let's see it come down so we can have another look at it. It's made of a stiff piece of wood, and it's joined at this end to a pillar. And it swivels up and down at this point here. This is called the pivot. All levers are stiff and they swivel up and down on a pivot. Cars and lorries of all shapes and sizes come through here into the studios and they have to get through safely so the gate has to go right up. It's designed so that when this part of the lever moves a little way, the other end moves a long way. The children at St. Aidan's Primary School in Wishaw have been finding out about levers, only theirs are a bit smaller and made out of stiff card. They found a way to pivot the lever by using a drawing pin turned upside down. To measure how far different parts of the lever travel, they began by finding the midpoint between the drawing pin and the edge of the card and marking it clearly. Then they covered the sharp point of the drawing pin with plasticine to make it safe. They marked both midpoint and end point on the paper underneath. Then they swiveled the lever on its pivot to a new position and marked where the two points had come to. They measured how far the midpoint of the lever had travelled. The result was 4.2 centimetres. Then they measured how far the end point of the lever had travelled. 8.4 centimetres. All their tests showed that the point furthest from the pivot travelled twice as far as the midpoint did. In the next test, they made marks at intervals of two centimetres along the lever from the pivot and recorded how far each point moved when the lever was pivoted. My arm can work like a lever, with the pivot at the shoulder. I've attached bulbs to my arm, one here near the shoulder, near the pivot, one at the elbow and one at the wrist. Now if we put the studio lights down, now when I move my arm, the bulb near the shoulder, near the pivot, moves a short distance. The bulb at the elbow moves further. The bulb at the wrist moves the furthest. Now if I make the lever longer, the end moves even further. My wings are like levers. They've both got stiff rods in them. And the pivot is at the back here. And when I flap my wings, 
The part near the pivot doesn't move very much at all. But at the end, the blue moves quite a long way. And with a little help from my friends, I might even fly. For many years, before men learned at last how to fly, they experimented with all sorts of contraptions. They tried to copy bird shapes and the lever action of bird's wings. This is a lever. This ruler is stiff. The pencil is the pivot. When I do this, the ruler swivels on the pivot. I'll put a half kilogram weight on the end nearest to the pivot. And I press here with my little finger. It's easy to lift the weight. In the middle, a bit more difficult to lift the weight. But here, near the pivot, it's hard. Same finger, same lever, but here, near the pivot, it's hard to lift the weight. And it's easy to lift the weight at the end, furthest away from the pivot. This is Goliath. He's made up of four levers one pivoting at the ankle, two at the knees, one at the shoulders. He's a splendid figure of a man, isn't he? Not too easy to carry around with you, though, especially on a picnic. We didn't mean to stop here, but we got a puncture. Malcolm's decided he'd get the food out, so I'm left with the problems of changing the wheel. First of all, I've got to get the hubcap off the wheel, and I know just what I need. Having props, Bev? No, uh... Use the lever. Just what I had in mind. Small push on this end, and... <coughs> off it comes. Ooh, bananas, lovely. I need something to crack the nuts with. Now, these will do. Have I put the nut in here, near the pivot? Squeeze the lever, and there goes the nut. How are you going on, Beverly? I can't shift the wheel nuts. What do you need, Beverly? Is a longer lever. <laughs> He's right again, I'm afraid. A longer lever. I can move this end further now. So I don't have to press so hard to get the nuts free. A bottle opener is like a lever. The pivot is here at the top. I pull on this end, comes the top. Come on, Bev, I'm starving. I like sardines, and I need another lever here. And this is the pivot, and this is the lever. It's a bit stiff, so I'm going to need an extension to help me open it. I'll use this. Here we are. Oh. All finished in, Bev? Yes, Mark. I'm on. nearly finished. Got nuts tight, hub cap on, tools away. Good, good, good. I was just thinking, mm -hmm. if you've got a problem getting rid of knolls, do you know what you can do about it? What's that? How about a lever? Oh. 
I wonder if we'll ever see him again. A Simon Hoist works using levers. Here's one lever. And at the bottom, there's a pivot. Here's another pivot and a lever at the top. And each lever has a ram that moves it. Let's see how it works. The bottom ram pushes up the bottom lever. Now the top ram. Notice that the ram moves a very short distance, whereas the man at the other end, he moves an enormous distance. All right, let's see it come down again. This is a model of a tipper trailer. And this skip is really a lever with sides. Here's the pivot. And this is the ram that works it. And on this model, we've got more than one lever. This is the first lever. And at the bottom here is the pivot. And these two are the rams that work it. Here is another lever. There's the pivot. And this is the ram that works it. And the bucket, that's a third lever. With the pivot there and the ram that works it there. Big machines like this one depend on simple levers. There are 10 tons of stone for road making in each bucketful. Look carefully at the levers. See how they move. Look for the pivot and for the rams that push and pull the levers. Forty tons of stone in the skip are carried by the dumper truck to the crusher. The skip is a giant lever. There are the rams pushing up 40 tons of stone and the weight of the skip. And there's the pivot. This machine, believe it or not, is known as a concrete nibbler.
door is a lever. It's stiff and the hinge is the pivot. It swivels on its hinges. The children at St. Aidan's had an idea with the door. They found that if you push against the door farthest from the hinge or pivot, you can easily close it. Push in the middle, nearer the pivot, and it's not so easy. Push next to the pivot, and a great deal of force is needed to close the door. If you want to measure how far the edge of a door travels compared with the end near the pivot, here's a way of doing it. Lay a sheet of paper under the door. Using the bottom of the door as a ruler, draw a straight line. Mark off the edge and the middle and the pivot end. Now we open the door to there and draw another line. The edge, the middle, and the pivot. And now we have to measure how far the edge has travelled, how far the middle has travelled, which is not so far, and the pivot end hasn't moved at all. Your science workshop book will help you find out all sorts of different things about levers. Well, I think that's all for this week, isn't it, Beverly? Yes, I think so, David. Oi! What about me? Oh, sorry, Malcolm. Well, we've decided to leave you there till next week. Oh, leave him alone, David. Well, I am leaving him alone. I'm leaving him till next week. <laughs>